Hello everyone, this is Prophetess Apple Robbins. I want to take this time to appreciate all of you who have partnered with us in our I Pioneer We Build campaign. We are in need of 2,500 partners that will sow a one-time seed of $100 to help us build the house of prayer. If you have yet to partner with us, this is a great time to get on board. Immediately follow my voice, the information needed for you to sow your one-time seed will follow. Thank you so much for your participation and great grace. Hey everybody, thank you for joining the River Chicago Worship Online Experience. I'm Pastor Robert Anderson, the executive pastor here, and I want to thank all of our first-time visitors, our family, and friends for tuning in today. I want you to know that you can find us on all the social media outlets. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and also YouTube. We want to thank you for tuning in today. You know, the Bible says in Psalms 91, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's just where we want you today, under the protection and the provision of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So as we get ready to go into the broadcast i'm asking you right now start your watch parties share 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 and engage we'd like to see your hearts and your thumbs up we really appreciate that at the conclusion of the broadcast i'll be back and we're going to have a time of giving and sowing and you'll have an opportunity to further this gospel through the ministry here at river chicago now get ready we're about to have a great worship experience with our next speaker god bless you and you all have a phenomenal day You are with us, uh, even the spirit of grace and truth. Uh, and we thank you, Lord, that even in this hour, uh, you are causing us to be known and do good. Uh, you are empowering us to do good uh, and to make miracles, signs, and wonders, uh, and to be those that produce fruit uh, and those that produce outcomes that are great uh, because you are working with us. Uh, we thank you for the working of the Holy Ghost uh, and the spirit of grace that is upon us. Uh, change and to make differences in the lives of people that you are causing us to encounter men and women uh, and to shift atmospheres uh, because you are with us uh, you are causing us to make a difference uh, everywhere we go because you are with us uh, you are shifting and changing uh, and shaking atmospheres uh, that it will favor the righteous cause of your people uh, because you are with us uh, because you are with us uh, you are causing healing and deliverance and miracles and signs and wonders uh, because you are with us. Uh, our words will not fall to the ground. Uh, because you are with us, uh, we shall not be defeated. Uh, because you are with us, uh, we are more than conquerors. Uh, we thank you, Father, that you are working in us. Uh, the will and the do, uh, the ability to do what we could not uh, by the spirit of grace. Uh, hold uh, on that that seems impossible uh, and we call it into the now uh, and we activate uh, the word of the Lord uh, and we begin to press out uh, and we push out uh, as you work through us uh, because you are with us uh, nothing is impossible because you are with us uh, nothing is impossible is there anything too hard for you the answer is no uh, because you are with us uh, you are healing all those that are oppressed of the 
the devil. Uh, you drive our powers. Uh, you drive our powers. Uh, you subdue and you do the share. Uh, you subdue it uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, even now we judge uh, every power, every satanic assignment, uh, every demonic delay, uh, causing our our destiny uh, to be held back and held up. Uh, we decree and declare. Jesus, I share, heal the hearts, heal the minds of the oppressed. Drive out now, by fire now, from the lives of our sons and daughters. We take air, let the power of God be released now to heal, to heal. Be healed in your mind. Be healed, ye that are oppressed, ye that are weary. Why? Because God is with us. He will not allow us to be destroyed by the enemy. Be healed in your mind. Those that are being tormented, be healed. Those that are being tormented, those who cannot sleep, those that are worrying, those that are stressed, be healed in your mind. In the name of Jesus, for Jesus healed all those being oppressed in their finances we call healing now in the name of Jesus those that are forsaken receive ye receive ye in the name of Jesus
people of God and welcome to our midweek service. Today is Wednesday, October the 28th and we're excited that you joined us uh, as we bring uh, a culmination to our month-long series of teaching on the subject of Jesus. And fortunately, we will continue this topic into the month of November, but we'll be emphasizing uh, the ministry of Christ uh, from an apostolic paradigm to really uh, help further build the capacity of the believer, you, in being Christ-like. And so I'm excited about tonight's teaching as we deal with Christ being the perfect model for growth. Uh, God is into growth. Um, everything about God in the context of his kingdom is, is, is consistently advancing and growing. And uh, he desires that you and I even go from a place called faith to faith and glory to glory. It requires growth uh, to access these realms. And so tonight is going to be a great release uh, of impartation and just a simple strategy for you and I uh, to really come into compliance with Christ's likeness and begin to experience growth from the perfect model, Christ himself. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time together this evening. Lord, breathe upon the word, refresh us, encourage the saints, and strengthen us with might in our inner men by your spirit to be a people who move beyond boundaries that have been established by the evil one, boundaries through societal strongholds, and boundaries that have been perpetuated even through things germane to our natural lineage to hinder us from growing. Tonight, let grace come upon us to grow and to be that formidable people that transcend in the earth and demonstrate Christ's likeness at all times. I bless you for your people, and Lord God, for all that will be involved in this teaching in the days to come. We honor you for your faithfulness and your steadfast love towards us. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's go to the Word. we got quite a few scriptures we need to share with you tonight, uh, beginning with Luke chapter 2, verse number 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in the spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. I want you to notice how this child is Jesus. He grew, and as a result, he waxed strong, was filled with wisdom, grace was upon him, Luke 2.52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Notice how now the Lord himself is increasing, uh, and he's increasing in wisdom in stature, his physical capacity and prowess and favor with God and man comes upon him. John chapter 3, verse number 34. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God, but God giveth not the spirit un, uh, not God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. In other words, that uh, there was continual growth, expansion, uh, capacity, and ability working in Christ as one sent by God, where things to impede his maturity, the increase of his stature, the increase of wisdom, whatever he needed uh, in the context of growing was supplied to him because he had the spirit of God without measure. Then Colossians chapter two. And verse 19, and not holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increase it with the increase of God. So when, when you look at these four verses kind of taken together, there's a perspective of the life of Jesus where uh, as a child he grew and it led to him developing ro robust capacity in the area of strength and wisdom uh, and grace also came as a result. And then Jesus is looking at this mature son now is increasing in wisdom and in stature. And as a result, favor with God and man is, is, is the compensating power that comes as a result. And then Jesus as one sent by God speaks the words of God, but the spirit dimension of him was without measure. In other words, the growth possibilities were in. Endless. The growth possibilities were countless. And then Christ being the head of the church has a body. You and I are a part of that body by joints and bands. Uh, he's, he's able to nourish us and minister unto us. And he knits us together and yet he increases us with the increase of God. And so everything in the mind of God for you and I as heirs of salvation, as heirs of God, as joint heirs with Jesus Christ, everything about this mandate, God desires us to grow. We should be able to grow. We shouldn't be at the same level 
spiritually we shouldn't have the same level relationally there are different realms and capacity to go from one place to another in God but it is going to take a working understanding uh, for you and I of what it actually means to grow we want to have uh, a qualitative growth that will in fact lead to uh, God being honored through our lives in a, in a proper way and then God being exalted uh, through our lives in a, in a way that honors him as well and so think about this when you think about growth you think about development or something that actually progresses or something that advances uh, within its orientation or uh, you can also think in terms of like a groundswell of activity and so the Lord wants that for you and I in every conceivable way of our lives so let's look at what is fundamental to the proper type of growth and that is going to be foundation Ephesians chapter 2 verses 20 through 22 and it reads and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord in whom he are also builded together for an habitation of God through the spirit. Now, the foundation upon which our lives are built as, as, as born again believers is going to determine the overall growth trajectory that we experience and also what we grow into. It's going to highlight your growth journey and projected potential, but it's also going to forecast what you will become. Notice how you and I, the New Testament believer, we're built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, but Christ is the chief cornerstone. Now, this is a big one because a lot of times the inaccurate growth patterns, people are growing, but you could grow wild. People are growing, but you could grow in being even more immature. You could grow in being more indifferent towards your own calling. And it's the foundation that settles that. This is why in this current season of, 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 of humanity and in her movements upon the earth, a lot of born-again believers have been involved in institutions and in systems where no solid foundation has been laid. We, 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 we as a people have somehow made the church to be everything other than what Jesus, the head of ordained for to be we made it a, a, a country club we made it a hub for uh, entrepreneurs to rub elbows. Nothing wrong with that, but that should not be the primary purpose. Uh, we've made it a place for you to come uh, and, and guilt, get all your guilt washed away and get all your issues with sin dealt with. We've made it a place where we really highlighted, you know, uh, you're liberated from this. Now you can become that. But how about we begin to emphasize the importance of having a qualitative foundation that when foundation is laid in a person's life, uh, it, 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 it determines uh, uh, your growth trajectory but also what you will grow into. Uh, in other words uh, the things that we are doing in the here and now in this realm uh, is it really worthy of your future? The stuff that we've given ourselves to partake of in the name of church, in the name of Christ, uh, is this something that's worthy of transacting with a time to come? Uh, can you? Are you willing to pass it on to your seed? Uh, is this something that's transference and generational worthy? If it's not, that means that you're growing in the wrong direction. But when we're built up on the proper foundation where Christ is the chief cornerstone, uh, then, 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 then our lives can be framely put together and we can grow into a holy temple. Verse 22 says, in whom we are also built together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. In other words, God is concerned about our foundation because once we align with Christ, here's the benefit of that. We grow into a holy temple. In other words, we're set apart by him and the things about our lives are fitly framed together. I remember as a kid getting these Lego blocks and trying to construct certain things out of these Lego blocks. And if you, you could use your imagination, but you'd have some abstract object that you've created uh, that, that, that can't even sit up right and do anything but when you put things together in the proper place you could actually construct something uh, that was a piece of artwork and some of us we look like a roar shark test uh, when folk go to get a psych eval of our lives just like somebody took paint and splattered all on the wall 19 different colors uh, and you looking like some psychedelic shack because that's where it's at no God ain't into all that God wants some order he wants some things to be properly aligned uh, he wants some things uh, that, that when, he, when our lives are constructed uh, by the wisdom of God, he looks and says, you know what? I can now begin to label them uh, as a holy temple uh, and, and, and they can become a habitation for me uh, to dwell in by my spirit. That is my ultimate goal uh, as a believer and as a leader of the local church that 
Our steward here in Chicago and those that are connected to us globally is to develop a people uh, that God will make his habitation. I don't know about you, but I want God to dwell uh, and to live where I live. I want the presence of God, the power of God. I don't want to constantly be under the threat of loss uh, and fear and intimidation and stuff falling apart uh, at the seam. Uh, I want God to be glorified through my life. I don't want him to be glorified through your life as well. And the way we grow and what we grow into uh, is going to determine that. Let's look at some more verses here. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Here's another aspect of growth. Not only a holy temple, but we want to grow up uh, uh, unto him in all things. Ephesians 4, 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. So there's a dimension of growth. Uh, it's, it's a maturity campaign. We can grow up in Jesus, who is the head of the church. He's the head of this body. The capacity to speak the truth in love is critical to that. Notice what Paul says. But speaking the truth in love may grow up unto him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. There are a lot of individuals I've met over the tenure of my life as a believer that the truth sometimes can be taken as an offensive tool and lead them to becoming ensnared uh, and, and sometimes, you know, I've heard this for years, it's not, it's not what you say, it's the way you say it. So the, the remedy in God to get people to grow, we got to speak the truth, but speak it in love. And so I'm just going to tell it how it is. Uh, I don't care how they take it. Uh, they just need to get, they need to grow up. Uh, I don't care what they say. Uh, it's the word of God. No, you legalistic. Uh, the, the letter kills, but it's the spirit that gives life. Uh, and a lot of times we can tell people the truth, but if it's not, if it's not coming from a place of genuineness, a place of sincerity uh, that's free from corruption, uh, it could actually foster an individual's demise uh, because the letter will kill once again. So speaking the truth in love empowers uh, believers to grow up in him in all things and become Christ-like. You have to realize that the, 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 the premises of Jesus being sent was because God loved us. And that means that those that God will send to represent him must also have this dimension of love inside of them so that when the truth is released, it won't become a snare that offends people, but it will become a place where they can really meet them. this God who loves them uh, with an everlasting love. And even though it may be a hard truth, uh, love will activate the grace that's needed for people to grow, to grow up in him. Uh, and so speaking the truth in love is mandated if we're going to grow. This capacity will be measured by growth in him in all things. Come on, Say it with me, audience, all things. Uh, now, all things could be comprised of relationship things. I don't know about you, but I stunk it up in the days of old uh, because I did not have a revelation of the power of relationships and did, didn't have an understanding of why relationships, at least during that tenure of my life, were of value for the future. And so sometimes we can, we can use people, we can take advantage of both kindness, so we think, and then we end up abdicating a relationship of substance that's actually seedbed for our potential in the days to come. And when people don't understand that they'll abuse relationships, like sometimes a, a parent can abuse their relationship with their child or a child with their parent or sibling to sibling or if you're in a platonic relationship, you're developing friendships. When people don't understand you, you don't understand them, it's difficult to grow in a relationship with them. But the Lord wants us to grow up in all things in him. So there are relationship things. And then there are health things. There are some people who are doing things that diametrically oppose longevity in the area of soundness in their health. But, but when, when you understand the power of God and God begins to challenge us in love through a truth consistent with your body is not your own is the temple of the Holy Ghost and if you defile it it'll attract a destruction mandate and then you become more conscious uh, it shouldn't be we get into worst case scenarios and then always need miracles uh, when the truth is spoken in love it empowers us to grow uh, and then you think about family things parental things spousal things uh, you think about economic things and spiritual things uh, Jesus wants us to grow up in him in all things uh, and that growth can be measured whatever your life entails today you need to take time to ask Holy Spirit to measure you uh, to see if you're growing Growing up in that thing in Christ uh, and representing him properly. Here's another area. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. This is, this is a powerful truth and I want to I give it from this aspect. One of the covenant names of God is El Shaddai. He's the many-breasted one. 
And God knows exactly what you and I need to thrive and to grow. And there's nothing that you can experience in life where God would not activate a supply for you to grow. So the principle here in this text is as a newborn babe, babes need milk. We are the desire, the sincere milk of God's word so we can grow. People want the deep things of God. Well, I need some real meat. I need the deep things of God. Well, you know, your lifestyle, if in fact you got deep stuff, uh, you would devalue it because you, you haven't grown enough to accommodate that. And so we always have to humble ourselves, develop a complete dependency on God as if we know nothing, even though the Spirit of God may have taught you a lot. And when we have that approach, when it comes to the Scriptures, uh, God, I desire you just like a baby needs some milk I, I need your word I desire the sincere milk of your word and I know the scripture says uh, that strong meat uh, is for those who have exercised their senses uh, to discern both good and evil but I'm not talking about that uh, I'm talking about you and I growing uh, I'm not talking about getting an appetite fed uh, I'm not talking about uh, something that's just simply palatable for you uh, it's almost like you think about love love should be elementary for the believer but you can never outgrow love because you'll always have experiences in life uh, where sometimes you'll be tested and when there's a desire for God's word, uh, like, like sincere milk, uh, uh, the milk of the word, we can grow. Uh, and so what could in fact arrest your development or, or, or prohibit you from breaking through uh, because you have desire like a child that's dependent on God the Father, you can always be assured that you will grow. Uh, a consistent appetite for God's word is imperative for growth. This is a major deal for the church and will always be. God wants healthy believers uh, who have a balanced diet. This is especially true for ministers of the gospel where the majority of our study time or desire for the word may be consumed with wanting others to grow. You see, I can't live my life as a preacher of the gospel uh, and everything I study is just to try to empower somebody else. Uh, it's, 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 it's like this, um, this duality. Uh, I got to get what I need to get from God, but at the same time, uh, I got to get from God what's needed for the people that I'm stewarding in this realm, uh, and that's a delicate balance, and you can easily tip over into the wrong realm where look these folk ain't gonna kill me uh, I gotta get what I need for me and now everything you get and preach to people uh, may be stuff that God has preached to you for you and that's where the wisdom of God comes in at uh, and this is where real growth can begin to manifest and break through for so for you preachers of the gospel and those of you that are stewarding God's inheritance, uh, leading people uh, is no small order. It is a very delicate balancing act. And that means you're going to have to give time not just for yourself, uh, but also for those in whom you are leading. Because... This is what's going to help individuals develop while you develop as well. Very interesting. Um, I was watching a documentary about a migration of um, whales and uh, from leading from some uh, like the south of California near Mexico. And they would come all the way up to uh, Alaska and up in that area and pass through a strait and how the, 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 the mothers would have their calves and the calves needed milk in order to survive and it would be the journey would almost take the mama out but once they would get through the perils of the journey there would be a robust supply of food uh, and it was like the mom had to have enough in her to make the journey and not just enough for her to make it but enough also for the calf to make it and sometimes in ministry what happens is, is that leaders and ministry gifts can get to a point where we only have enough in us in us for us to make it and then those who need us to help them navigate uh, the rigors and the perils of life they don't get from us what they need per se and it's unfair on both ends if you don't understand this uh, and I don't know why I'm drilling this but I think it's important uh, that there must be a desire no, the word is sincere milk so we can grow uh, and realizing that even in this time frame we are in, there are people uh, who don't have the capacity on their own to really get in the word and study the word uh, and apply the word. Uh, but one of the things that God earmarks leaders for is leadership. Uh, we can supply that strength and we can get that impartation uh, so that all of us can navigate the rigors of this time and get into a place uh, of breakthrough and promise. Uh, I speak that over you in Jesus name. Uh, now may God give you a renewed hunger for his word uh, second peter chapter 3 verse 18 uh, but grow in grace now we're growing 
By the sincere milk of the word, we're growing up in him in all things. We're growing into a holy temple, but we also want to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Growth in Christ likeness will be, the, will be in direct proportion to growth in grace. We committed an entire month to teaching on the subject of grace. And here are two things that I can never emphasize enough that grace will, will produce in a person's life when you get around a legitimate grace carrier. Grace will produce the knowledge of God. Notice what the text says. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In other words, when Real grace carriers teach the word of God. It promotes growth in the knowledge of God, in the knowledge of Christ. And then it yields a harvest known as transformational living, uh, where you change uh, and you can go from that dimension of faith to faith and glory to glory. That is how it works. Uh, grace causes our hearts to be divinely influenced by God to become like him from the inside out. Once this happens, the believer can appropriately apply knowledge uh, and principles that will lead to their development uh, and and proper growth patterns as a saint of the most high God. And I want to I delve into this and I'm going to end this teaching from this text in John chapter 15. I'm going to look at the final aspect that will foster growth is learning how to abide in Christ. And sometimes the most grueling thing for us to do is to get in a realm in God and stay there. Until he says something different to us. So let's look at John chapter uh, 15 verses 1 through 11. John 15 verses 1 through 11. So thus far we have covered uh, the, the, the growth trajectory of Christ as a child he grew. Waxed strong in the spirit, was full of wisdom, grace was on him. He increased in wisdom and stature, grew in favor uh, with God and with man. And uh, he had the spirit of God without measure. And now he's the head of the church. And everything that he's ordained is to keep you and I connected so we can increase in the increase of God. We're to grow as a holy temple. We're to grow up in him in all things. We're to, we're to desire the sin symbol of the word so we can grow thereby. We're to grow in grace and in knowledge. And now this thing of Abiding in him uh, is going to be a key factor to you and I growing and breaking certain uh, paradigms that are consistent with life to impede our development as heirs of God's kingdom. John chapter 15 verses 1 through 11. I am the true vine, this is Jesus, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can, no, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him the same, bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. Now that's powerful. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall you be called my disciples. As the father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Now, this, these 11 verses in and of themselves is a three to a four part teaching, like literally. Just dealing with the word abide, which we're going to touch on. And Jesus emphasizes several times here about abiding in him like for instance in verse number verse number four he tells us abide in me and i in you and then the latter part of that verse abide in me uh and then in verse number five abideth in me then you see it again in verse number six if a man abide not in me verse number seven abide in me my words abide in you so the emphasis here is abiding and once we learn how to abide in christ it's going to give us the level of growth that, that the kind of growth that yields productivity. So, for instance, in Genesis chapter 1, when God blessed man, God, Adam and Eve, God said unto them, be fruitful. 
The word fruitful correlates with being productive, live a productive life. And the key to us being productive and bearing fruit, that's a picture of growth. We've got to abide in him and allow him to abide in us. His word, his love, his ways, his nature, his character. And then it produces this thing known as fullness of joy. And so let me give you several things that you and I can benefit from when we abide in Christ. Abiding in Christ assures us of having a life filled with fruitfulness and productivity. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And not in the context of like, okay, well, you just, you know, you can't move your arm, you can't open your eyes. And that is true to a sense because if God withdraws his breath from us, then you and I are lifeless. And so sometimes people take that for granted, even the believer that is him who's breathing his breath into our lungs, is him that is empowering our brains and neurological system, cardiovascular system, and everything else that makes these bodies living vessels. It is the sovereignty of God at work in us. And so abiding in Christ assures us of having a life filled with fruitfulness and Productivity, So you can be alive and you can live a life that appears to be fruitful and prosperous to the natural. But in the, in the realm of God, your life is looked at as being totally null and void of any real purpose because there's no abiding in him. And that is what he wants from us. And so apart from him, we can do nothing. Our inabilities will cease once we abide in him and God's sovereignty can manifest and we can begin to do things that transcend what the world told us we could do or what our bloodlines told us we could do, what society may have told you can do because in him we can bring forth much fruit. Abiding in Christ empowers us to live a, a, a life where we experience answers to our prayers. The Lord says if we abide in him and his words abide in us, we can ask what we will and it shall be done unto us. That's John 15, 7. As you abide in him, there's going to come answers. And so now sometimes the secret to really getting things done, let me say it this way, the answers we're looking for may not come packaged in the way we want. But yet the answers will manifest. People can be crying out for a lot of different things. Uh, and when you're not abiding in him, when that blessing or that answer comes, you can't see it the way it needs to be seen because you're not in him, the one who gives you sight to know what's of him and what's not of him. And so there's an acceleration coming to especially houses of prayer in this intense season where some of the stuff that has been delaying your prayers and the answers thereof and hindering you, breakthrough is going to come and you're going to experience the power of God and answers to prayers in an unusual way because you've been abiding in him. Abiding in Christ also empowers us to find rest for our souls. The believer can cease from internal conflicts, strife with themselves and strife with others and, 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 and where failure has been the product of your life and defeat has been the fruit of your existence. Now you're going to start experiencing victories uh, just from abiding in him because abiding in Christ will assure us of victory, refreshing breakthrough and a life filled with fruit that remains. That's why Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, come unto me. All you that have labored and are heavy laden, his yoke is easy, his burden is light, and you will find rest for your soul. I speak that over you. Uh, but that devil has had us toiling uh, and running to and fro. May your soul experience uh, the rest of God. And may you come into a realm uh, where you cease from experiencing these internal conflicts and doubt yourself uh, and afraid uh, of stepping out in faith uh, and overly concerned about the opinions of other people. Live your life for God. Uh, you live your life to please God. You live your life to be fruitful in him. Uh, don't you worry about your critics. Uh, and don't you worry about the pundits of hell uh, that always got answers and ain't got nothing to do with God. You keep your focus on God uh, and watch breakthrough manifest in your life. Uh, here's another one as I bring this to a close. Uh, abiding in Christ gives us power to access the wisdom of God that is necessary to bring forth fruit and live a productive life and grow. It takes wisdom to be fruitful. It takes wisdom to be productive. It, it takes wisdom to grow. You, you, you think about this like a, like a, like a skillful gardener. And, and you, you got a garden, but you know you're in an area with all kind of weeds and wild vegetation that grows and stuff that could choke the life out your garden. You got to make sure that you fertilize it, that you give it the right kind of soil, nutrient, bolstering ingredients. You got to get in there sometimes and root stuff out. You got to water it when it needs to be watered. And it takes a wisdom even to grow a relationship 
neighbor, to grow a family, to grow a business, to grow a ministry. And I'm not talking about just copying and pasting stuff uh, and making it look like uh, it's really doing something. Uh, but at the end of the day, the development of people were individuals uh, who have a mindset governed by Whatever it is they've experienced in life, uh, over a period of time, we start measuring stuff. Uh, people have become more Christ-like. People uh, have become developed in things uh, that, that transcend men. Uh, like the popular thing now is, uh, you know, spiritually, who your spiritual daddy is, uh, who your spiritual father is. Folk want to pay folk to be their daddies. Uh, people want to pay uh, and buy into spiritual franchises and act like uh, this is McDonald's and your first name Ray, your last name Croc or something. Man, we don't have time for all that. Uh, and what we're doing is producing impotent believers that when you take them out of that equation uh, they don't know what to do to advance Christ because uh, what you do only works with what you are part of uh, you need to know that God has put eternity in our hearts uh, and he wants the people of organic growth uh, and abiding in him will supply you with wisdom uh, to break growth barriers uh, the last point I'm bringing this to a close abiding in Christ causes his joy to remain in us and our joy to be fulfilled matured or complete according to John 15 11 the joy of the Lord produces strength for the believer and it's a vital part of you and I experiencing fulfillment joy is not an emotion and joy is not predicated uh, on working based on a situation it is supernatural uh, it's, a, it's an attribute of the kingdom of God uh, and let me give it to you this way uh, it, 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 in loss and going through uh, things breaking down and, and, and perhaps painful experiences uh, sorrow would be an emotion that stirred up uh, to accommodate that specific situation uh, but even even in the midst of a time uh, where you should be experiencing sorrow, you can also have joy if you abide in Christ. Uh, and it'll produce the strength that you need. Uh, it don't make you a super saint. Uh, it just makes you a person who is wise, uh, who has purpose to grow intentionally. Uh, let me say it this way. Growth never comes by accident. Uh, it's just like a person uh, who is, a, who is, a, who is a, 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 a professional athlete. You don't become a professional athlete because you go to sleep and have a dream that you want. And then you wake up uh, all of a sudden with skills that come from another planet. You got to put that work in. You got to abide in that gym. You got to abide in that film room. You got to abide in that place where the practices are taking place. And you got to give yourself to whatever process it is that's constructed for you to become the elite individual that you are. It's the same in Christ. You don't become this anointed vessel that power moves through and breakthrough is facilitated or you live a life impeccable in Christ where you're one with him apart from being intentional. And so my prayer for you is that God will give you uh, the wisdom and strategy you need uh, as an heir of God's kingdom to grow and experience the fullness uh, of what God has ordained for you. Uh, so right there where you're at, let me pray for you and bless you. Father, thank you for these amazing ministry gifts and the saints of God. And as we bring uh, this October series of teaching to a close, I pray, Lord God, for uh, the continuity in this thing known as Christ-likeness and that Jesus would be exalted through all that we say and do. And you'll bring us into a realm of divine encounter and a people who will know you for it is written and the people that know that God shall be strong and do exploits. And so let exploits be upon the tabernacles of the righteous and bring our lives into a realm where we abide in you to bring forth much fruit. I speak productivity over you. I declare you grow up in him in all things. Whatever it is uh, that's trending in your life now, I prophesy grace for you to grow in the knowledge of Christ, to grow in Christ's likeness, to grow in the ways of Christ, that barriers to your progress be judged by the Spirit of God, and that you'll come into a realm of comprehending and understanding uh, the call and the commission of Christ for you, uh, and you'll give yourself to doctrine, uh, you'll give yourself to foundation uh, and foundational teachings, and Christ shall be glorified through you. Uh, so I bless you. I bless your family. I bless your ministry. I bless your business, your health, your mind, uh, your mental faculties, all uh, that is currently under the scrutiny of the enemy or the spotlight of eternity uh, and growth is mandated for breakthrough. Uh, be it unto you this evening in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, blessings to your people of God and thank you so much for 
giving us uh, these few moments to stream into your home and to share the word of the Lord with you. May the wisdom of God be upon you to grow and may you continue to traverse this realm with skill and with excellence, especially when it comes to glorifying the king. God bless you. Strength and honor under you. And saints, don't forget we are still in need of partners and those that will support us in our We Build 2.0 uh, campaign. Uh, we've made tremendous progress, but it's going to take the support of our partners and friends to make the vision a reality. The 2.5 thousand partners that we need uh, to sow a one-time seed of $100, that campaign is still active and engaged. So view the information that's going to come on after my voice and purpose to partner with us, especially in the area of prayer, decreeing that God will meet that budget and that we will have an overflow and increase if you cannot give financially, by all means, make sure you partner with us in prayer. You can definitely do that. And the scripture is clear. If we abide in him and his words abide in us, we can ask what we will and it shall be given unto us. Until next time, more grace be unto you people of God. Grow in grace and grow in Christ likeness. Well, it's giving time. Go ahead and begin to type in the comments. I'm a cheerful giver. Come on, type that in the comments. I'm a cheerful giver. I'm a cheerful giver. Listen, Rivers family, our partners, friends, and all you that give, allow me to take a moment and let you know what giving does. Through giving, we reach our community. Through giving, we spread the gospel. Through giving, we fight the darkness. Through giving, we feed the hungry. Through giving, we worship the God of our salvation. Through giving, we heal the broken. Through giving, we fulfill our mission to exalt Jesus Christ, educate the believer, and engage the culture. Your giving matters. Through giving, we create environments, whether it's face-to-face -face or virtually, for people to know Jesus Christ and to advance the kingdom. Today, 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 I want to pray over your giving and weaponize it to accomplish God's purposes in the earth. Father, right now, I bring these cheerful givers before you. And according to Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, which declares honor the Lord with your capital and sufficiency from righteous labors and with the first fruits of all your income. So shall your storage places be filled with plenty and your vats shall be overflowing with new wine. I call for abundance as we honor the Lord with our capital and with our sufficiency. Our storage places, our investments, our bank accounts are filled with plenty and our presses are bursting forth with new wine. We are abundantly supplied. Oh, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, in accordance to Philippians 419, you said in your word that you are the God who will take care of us. You are the God who will supply all our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and on the authority of his holy word, we call all debts to be paid in full. We speak to debts in the mighty name of Jesus. We command you to be paid. We command you to be gone, dematerialize, and cease to exist. We declare that all debts, all medical bills, all notes, and any debts past, present, or future are paid in full. They are canceled. They are dissolved in the name of Jesus. Father, we immediately respond in faith to the guidance of the Holy Spirit within us. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are always having us in the right place at the right time because our footsteps are ordered by the Lord. Our God makes all grace abound towards us in every favor and every earthly blessing that we always having all sufficiency for all things may abound unto every good work. The Lord has opened unto us his good treasure and has blessed the work of our hands. He has commanded the blessing upon us in our storehouse and all that we undertake and we receive the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Now all my cheerful givers, all my cheerful givers from rivers of living water, all the cheerful givers of our partners and all those that are friends and all those that sow into the ministry, I just thank you for being there for us and doing what you do to the glory of God to promote his plans and his purposes in the earth realm. Right now I just want to take time out and I want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. We look forward to ministering to you again again real soon. God bless.